Hi, I'm Kim the Paper Traveler. A little coffee, a little rain, and talking about bullfrog. <laughs> I love these sounds. And talking about the top five favorite books that I've read so far in 2023. So coming in at number five is The Ferryman by Justin Cronin. This one is worth a read if you love books that are kind of like, seems like a made up world and wondering what's going on. People have ports in their arms that give readings of their well-being. And after their numbers dip so low, they're taken to a place called the nursery where they sort of get recycled to be a child. And then you have another area that are the working class people that take care of the people in the main Prospera. So you have these three divisions and you're wondering what is going on. And the main character is the ferryman. He takes these people to the nursery until something happens one day that started the ball rolling and you're wondering what is going on. This is the page turner and I highly recommend it. I don't want to give too much. It's one of those you really need to go into if you love trying to figure things out. Definitely. <laughs> it's just uh, that ending is totally unlike what I thought it was going to be. Coming in at number four is Kindred by Octavia Butler. This is one that I've been wanting to read for a while and I noticed there was a show on TV so I wanted to watch that too but I wanted to read the book first. Imagine you are a person that goes back in time. It's never explained really why this happens. It's a, a black lady that goes way back in time to the times of slavery. So you can imagine what impact that has. And I love the concept of this book. You hear of people going back in time and they're trying to fit in with the times and do what they do. But to be a black person, your life is going to be totally different than what it is now. You're a modern woman going back to these times, getting beaten. And it was just such a good book and I highly recommend it to everyone. However, the show, I just could not watch. I think I tried watching two if I could not watch it. I think it actually did get canceled too. They changed the story too much and I was not enjoying it at all. So I don't recommend watching that, but definitely read the book. And the next book I enjoyed is by an author that I've read before, Robert Jensdale. Another of his books that I've enjoyed is called The Toy Makers, but this one was called Gingerbread. This is sort of a survivalist story in a way. It reminds me of a little bit, it's compared to also The Road, but not quite so much. It's not dystopia time. It's about a boy's mother that is dying, so she takes her son to live with the grandfather because she knows she's not gonna live very much longer so the grandfather can help raise him. Her grandfather, as you can tell as the story progresses, has some mental issues from times of war that comes creeping back from time to time and he's struggling taking care of this boy. So one day, they, after the mother dies, they go off into the wilderness where his wife is buried to bury his daughter, taking along his grandson. And he gets a little crazy and he decides never to return to the real world. So him and his grandson are out in the wilds surviving through all this while he slowly goes into madness even further. And the boy is trying to figure out what to do. Very good read. I really enjoyed that book so much. The next book I'm a little hesitant to even talk about because I can't find it to buy anywhere, but it's The Monsters in Our Shadows. But I really enjoyed that book. It was one that I got through NetGalley. It's supposedly it's supposed to come out in April, but I don't see it anywhere to buy on Kindle or a physical form. But be on the lookout for this book. If you love dystopian horror books, this one is great. So the Monsters in Our Shadows is about, it's dystopia times. The whole world, there's just, just this little settlement left and they have built great big walls around them and you're trying to figure out what's going on. They're trying to keep the outside world away from them. There is a kind of like a shadow monsters that lurks around you that slowly keeps watching you and watching you and they get closer and closer and finally comes a time they start devouring that human. Some people are infected with this and some not. So a person knows this is going to happen. They want to be put to sleep 
before they get devoured by the monster. And that's what the main character of this book does. He is the person that puts them to sleep and takes them outside the wall. Oh yeah, things go wrong in this one too. And he set out in a journey to the outside world and he finds out some things he didn't know. This was a good adventurous journey. A little bit of horror, like I said. Really enjoyed that so, so much. So be on the lookout if they ever do have this available to buy. And my favorite book, my number one book, is one that I didn't plan at all. And I'm going to tell you a few things before I start this. I was looking for a book to listen to while I was doing some cleaning. And I came across this book and I saw this and I thought, well, that's probably one of those cutesy romance books. I'm not really into that. I actually DNF'd one of those type of books. Sorry, I know it's a favorite, but I'm just not into that kind of book. But this one was an older guy who's a wielder and a younger girl who's a student in school. And this wound up being my favorite book of the year. It's a, my first five star of the year. And don't let this cutesy cover fool you. It's The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. I believe this is her debut novel too. If you love books that help inspire you to read other books because there is a certain reading list. Both of these main characters were never readers of fiction. They didn't see any use in it, but there are certain things that bring them to reading books on this reading list. And I don't want to tell you what this reading list, I will tell you it starts with To Kill a Mockingbird. And the way this book does, it doesn't just like, oh, there's this book, they read this. It tells you about what it meant to that person. And the author was so good about weaving the story around the meaning of these books. This is a book that will rip your heart out. <laughs> At the end of the book, I was crying tears of joy. I, I don't cry in books usually. I was listening to the audiobook, mind you, but, and then I wound up buying the physical copy because I loved it so much. I wanted to read it and tab it. But I was crying at the end of this book. I was tearing up thinking about it, but it does have moments of sadness and moments of joy and just compels you to want to read several of these books that are talked about in this. And it just, it just was the right book at the right time. And I totally recommend it if you haven't read it yet. So my very top book and I'm eager to reread it and tab it. So let's see if this holds up at the end of the year as becoming my favorite of all. Oh, you can now hear the birds. Well, thank you for watching today. Tell me what some of your favorite books that you've read so far this year in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Have a great reading summer. Goodbye. Well, this is one way to get your glasses clean.